upon the fields of Evermore, the knights of Badassdom have been met. Hip, 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 In a world, within our world, they'd created a world unlike any other world. You bastard. Where are we? Tis the kingdom of Eliphaz, my naive friend. That looks terrible. My three-year-old nephew can make a better map. He's got learning disabilities. You Shanghai me and dress me. Adventuring is exactly what thou needst. Needst is not a word. Where we are, it is. Thou hast been recruited to fight at the epic battle of Evermore. Welcome to the fields of Evermore! You guys do actually look slightly badass. Eric's about to level up to Grand Sorcerer. I'm packing an ounce of killer shrooms. And there be monsters in need of pummeling. I'm in. But for these make-believe heroes... Guys, pentagrams? And yeah, we'd roll that way here, all right? This is the Lark, not the Wicker Man we can cosplay. Something truly evil... ...is taking their fantasy... ...to a whole new reality. You just summoned a succubus from hell. Sorry. Time has come to earn our valor, people. Use the book to send that bitch back wherever she came from. I don't know how. I just picked a page at random earlier. Pick another page and hurry up. <laughs> I covered only one thing. Honor and victory! Wait, literally, that is two things. Uh. Is that of the witch? Ah, uh, I'm out of here. How awesome was that? An A plus motherfucker. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! So, what'd you guys think of the clip? That's right. And guess what? Some of those people on the clip are here for this panel. Come on, let's let them know you're happy they're here. There we go. All right, since you've already heard the speech about not filming clips and one of them already ran, I'm gonna go ahead and just get right into it. So now I'd like to introduce the moderator for the Knights of Badass panel, Mr. Anthony Bresnikan. Thank you. Hey, Hall H, how are you today? Um, my name is Anthony Bresnikan. I'm a writer for Entertainment Weekly, and uh, I'm very pleased to be moderating this panel today, but, you know, I think it's such a true thing. It's, it's all fun and games until someone summons a succubus from hell. That's hard to say. Um, uh, uh, you know, I, I imagine this is a good audience for this film because there are a lot of people here uh, costumed as people they're not normally in everyday life, right? How many people here are in costume in some form or another? All right, and, and, and has anybody done a spell that may have accidentally awakened a demon, a succubus? Are there any, are there any succubi in the audience? All right, if, if somebody yelled, you neighbors, keep an eye on that person. All right, so we're gonna introduce uh, the filmmaker and the, the cast of this movie. Uh, he's making his big screen debut, a guy who has been a lifelong horror fan uh, you've seen him host uh, the Body Count segment on G4. Uh, he, he cut his teeth on uh, music videos, and he made 2007's Wrong Turn 2. The director of Knights of Bad Astom, their royalty, Mr. Joe Lynch. Holy shit! <laughs> 
Thank you. Holy shnikes. We're in a hall H. Thank you! Ooh, candies. So you know Ms. Jason Stackhouse on a show called True Blood. Plays Joe in this movie. He's not, he's not down with the LARPers, though. He has roommates who are, and he just, uh, he's, but he gets dragged into this anyway. Mr. Ryan Quantin. And this guy, he, he always plays bad guys, but he's a really nice guy. He's from Date Night. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. He's in, he's in Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, which will be coming out. Jimmy Simpson. Yeah. From Community, Danny Puddy. You probably know him from Mad Men, Michael Gladys. She co starred in Adventureland, Spread, The Invisible, the monstrous Margarita Laviva. And I think you guys know, uh, know this next person. I'm just gonna say Firefly. Serenity. She was a Terminator. Summer Glau. And finally, I think, uh, I, th I think it's fair to say his big breakthrough came in uh, a great 2003 movie called The Station Agent. But you also know him as a man who always pays his debts. Yeah! <laughs> Tyrion Lannister on Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage! I just love it how I come out like a total douche and Peter just raises his hand <laughs> ever so slightly. You're a class act, sir, all the way down there. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the bass on that voice, jeez. It's a lot of bass. Whew. So Joe, this, uh, this movie, I think it's fair to say, is if you could just distill geek and put it on film, this would be the product that- Thank that, you for that, that by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to me, Pootie. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm kidding. No, it, honestly, like. But you, you, you've cast, you have a cast of people who are, who are uh, you have made a huge impression in genre films, and this is. Uh, and they're all looking at me now. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't look at me once on set. It's a little. Thank so, you. Thank why, you very much. <laughs> why did you want people who, who already had established themselves in, in, to, in the sci fi fantasy genre? A lot of people have said in the last, you know, like we've been doing some press about the movie, and a lot of people have been like, you designed this. This is all marketing. It's very shrewd marketing. Excellent. Touche. <laughs> uh, but to be totally honest with you guys, um, you know, this is a testament to the script that uh, Matt Wall and Kevin Dreyfus have done. And, uh, it, you know, I, I read it and went, oh my God, heavy metal and and LARPing, and it's a kind of a, it's in modern times, and it's got monsters, yes. And when we, you know, kind of went out to, uh, you know, th these amazing actors, it was kind of like, wait, really? They, yes, really? It, it, just down the line. And it, I think it really was a testament to the, you know, to the script itself, and everybody was just so kind of ready to be in game. I mean, come on, it was a summer of hanging out and throwing lightning bolts at each other and throwing blood all over the place. It's the best summer ever, you know? So, no, it, was, it really was a testament to the script. It wasn't designed. We just got very, very lucky. Or we just chalk it up to magic. <laughs> Easy. Well, it's a comedy, but 
there's also a horror element to this, right? How would you describe the, 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 the tone of the movie? On, honestly, I would actually just call this an adventure film, you know, because to <laughs> me, the adventure film genre is one that combines thrills and spills and chills and, you know, it's got, la it's like, you know, you look at uh, the Goonies or Ghostbusters or, rom or Romancing the Stone or Excalibur. I mean, it, even Conan the Barbarian, I mean, there's a couple laughs in there, not at, you know, Conan's expense, unfortunately, but, uh, but that's the thing. It's like you can watch an adventure film and it has everything put together. That's what made this film so, to me, like, so exciting was I got to do a little bit of comedy and a little bit of horror and a little bit of drama. And, you know, it was everything that I loved about these types of movies that I grew up with in one film, you know, and heavy metal, which always helps. So. <laughs> well, now, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I think it's, it's fair to say that, you, you know, there are thousands of, uh, of LARPers who are out on this excursion when the uh, succubus gets unleashed, and, and, but you don't just kill uh, what I guess you could call red shirts, to use a Star Trek term. Very uh, nice. Uh, you, you, you're, there are a couple of red shirts in the film, actually. There are a couple of red shirts, but, but you, you know, your main cast is also vulnerable, right? Why was that important to have not everybody have a happy ending or an ending at all? Well, happy endings were after the shoot was over. Um, you look all the way to the end of the table for that. Um, it, was in his, it was in contract. Um, I'm kidding. I love you, Peter. Uh, no, the thing that was... I don't know. Talking about happy endings? Sorry? Was that directed at me? No? I didn't hear, I didn't hear what you said. Okay. okay. I'm so dead. Um... No, like the thing, the two of the films that really inspired me when I read this, um, because look, the, the, the worst thing that we could do with this film, you know, because it has a culture that not everybody is very familiar with, some people kind of possibly could look down on it. This crowd doesn't look down on it because this movie is made for us. But, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a film that not everybody is going to embrace at first because they're like, whoa, whoa dude, real dudes getting dressed up in, you know, wizard costumes and they have real problems and everything. This isn't a medieval film. What's going on? You know? So the, the best thing that we could do was ab absolutely respect the LARPing community. And the first thing that we did was um, we went out to the LARP Alliance, which is one of the West Coast uh, LARP guilds. And I'm sure that they're represented out here today. Anybody? There they are all the way in the back. You guys rock! Um, but Rick McCoy and Adrian Grady, who uh, run the LARPing community there, um, we basically kind of reached out to them and said, are we doing this right? And, uh, you know, and they were very supportive from the beginning and they were instrumental in getting us, you know, all the, making sure the rules were right and making sure that the, you know, that we were, had real, we have, this sounds so weird, we have real LARPers in our film. Every LARPer in this film is absolutely 100% real in game. Uh, and that was, that was integral to the whole project because, you know, like we're on set, all of us are sitting there and we're like, there's all these dudes and they're bringing their own costumes and we're sitting there and like, I remember Ryan came out in his costume one day and was like, that's nice. It's like, it, it, it was the guy, the guy made it, you know? So the, the whole point of that is we wanted to make sure that it was as faithful to the LARPing community as possible because we wanted to embrace them, not make fun of them. And by the end of the movie, if, if one person grabs a foam sword at the end of the film, we've done our job. <laughs> Well, Ryan, your character Joe, he, he's, he's not a part of this community. He's friends with these guys, but he's kind of, even, I guess for an audience member who, who's not into this, he's sort of their eyes, their perspective on it. How would you describe Joe? How does he fit in and how does he not fit in with the LARPers? Yeah, I guess Joe is very much the uh, subjective point of view of the mm -hmm. film. He's the one that we're, that we're sort of going into this world that Joe has sort of created, um, thinking, uh, I'm not really sure if I buy this. And... Uh, he comes in with this sort of air of pessimism. He's just sort of broken up with the, uh, the love of his life. Well, she's very much broken up with him. Um, and he sort of very quickly realizes that these guys take it very seriously. And the more serious they take it, the more sort of comical he seems to find it. But then very quickly, this, uh, the comedy's turned serious. And, you know, their blood and guts start appearing randomly. And uh, he's forced to sort of try and pick up the pieces. Lots, <laughs> lots of pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, he's, he's kind of lost though, right? I mean, you, you mentioned that he just got, he just broke up with his girlfriend, but, but he, he, wants, he wants to be a musician. He, he seems like he has a lot of big dreams. He just doesn't, what? He just hasn't pulled, pulled it together, hasn't picked yeah, up look, his own Yeah, look, there's, there's a real sort of tortured soul sort of mentality that, you know, he needs his, uh, his roommates to kind of pick him up and, uh, 
and put him back together. And that's where sort of uh, Peter and Steve Zahn sort of uh, do a good job in trying to psych the boy up again. So even before things get really weird on this LARP, uh, yeah. he meets Gwen, the character played by Summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Summer, I, I guess, could you just, I guess, introduce us to her? Who is she? She's kind of a mystery girl, right? At the beginning of the story? She is. I think that uh, what, what Joe and I had discussed is that she comes with her cousin, who's really hardcore, uh, Gunther. And she's sort of like a, an in-between. She doesn't quite take it all the way. She can, she can go in and out of game a little bit more than some mm -hmm. of the other characters. But um, she's just really fun-loving, and she can, she can dive in and take the story seriously and get into it. But then also, it's kind of can be maybe a little bit more reserved and cool, and I think that's why, why she and Joe can bond in the beginning. Well, she certainly can be reserved and cool, but I think, is it fair to say that she's one of the sweeter characters you've played? You actually get to smile in this movie, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. was, that, was, that, was that a difference? Did you feel that? <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, we were smiled a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and Peter, lately we've, uh, uh, we've seen you as this sort of shrewd, calculating character on Game of Thrones, but... Uh, <laughs> I think I think Hung has a big heart, right? But he he he's yes, not he quite as. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's not. he's completely miscalculating. <laughs> he's, he's miscalculating. Yeah, all the time. Um, yeah, it's quite the opposite. Where is he? Where is he in his life as this story begins? Tell us, tell us how he got to this point. Why does he have the name Hung? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people want to know the answer to that question. Wait for the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> on the commentary um, no it's like Ryan was saying it's sort of it's a very uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, it's very fraternal um, mm -hmm. uh, Hung and uh, his two roommates Ryan and played by Ryan and Steve Zahn are very very close and these two guys really live for the LARP and uh, my character Hung um, maybe not the sharpest knife in the drawer uh, <laughs> It's, 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 it's a lot to him. And uh, he takes it maybe a little too seriously sometimes, where mm -hmm. it sort of blurs the reality of uh, his life. With a little help, right? With a little help from uh, narcotics. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't help in the long run, but uh, yeah, so. It's hard to see a real succubus when you see them everywhere. He's irresponsible, right? yeah. very irresponsible. <laughs> but a hell of a swordsman, absolutely. I mean, actually, one of the things that was really amazing was when everybody came on uh, to Spokane. We shot it in Spokane, Washington last summer. Spokane! Um, when we, when ev we got there, everybody was like, you know, being festooned with gift baskets, and they're like, when are we LARPing? So we had like a LARPing boot camp, and uh, Adrian and Rick, who came, became our technical advisors, we had this, these like classes where everybody was sitting there with, you know, foam swords, learning all the rules, making sure that we were very, very strict to the rules and everything, and then they, they just went, okay, go play, go, go LARP, you know, like, just, just spar. And watch Peter Dinklage smote every single cast member in one fell swoop and then be like, craft service. <laughs> <laughs> You're being modest, I can see your face. He literally just went, bop, 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 boop, bop, yeah, boop. The, the double sword action. He, yeah, he, it was amazing. And, you know, he's just like, boop, 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 Narnia, and just walked off. <laughs> Everybody got so into it. It was amazing. Like, just everybody, like, Danny would come over and be like, how does my hand need to be, if I'm a cleric, how does this need to be, like, ever so right? And Steve would be like, how many lightning bolts need to be in my pouch? <laughs> hey, gotta, gotta give it up. I mean, we, we tried to be as faithful to it as possible, but, yeah, the Dinklage destroyed us all. It's nope. made of foam. <laughs> <laughs> it still hurts. You don't have to be safe. <laughs> It's great. You just go crazy. It hurt a lot. There's no safety meeting. <laughs> now, Margarita, you play the, the bad guy, right? Yes, and, and you, kind of. You, you, spend, you spend most of the movie wandering the woods in a blue prom dress with blood smeared on your mouth. How does the succubus end up in your form in that outfit? Um, well, I mean... It, she gets evoked um, because my character is Joe's ex-girlfriend. 
um, Beth that gets evoked into a succubus. So she takes the form of Beth, but it's a real life succubus, which was quite extraordinary to play. So, so <laughs> what was the most fun thing you got to do apart from rip into the heart? Was there any particular part where you got to really monster out? Well, I think just uh, creating a creature that I, you know, uh, as an actor, when you play certain roles you've seen before, but when you get to create a creature that you are not really familiar with and it's all of your own making, it's just a tremendous experience and using a lot of animal work and, you know, it was, it was fun. <laughs> There was a lot of growl training yes. in that. It was like, should I growl like, Ugh, or should it be, Ugh? and I was like, there was some growl. A little in between. <laughs> a little in between. Actually, Margarita, one of the fun things about uh, when Margarita would come on set as succ succubus or succubeth, which is a very nice touch, um, was like in, on my last film, I had a thing in my contract that said I needed to have a bucket of blood next to my, uh, my, my chair so I can just start throwing blood on, in the, on the screen. And, uh, and here, I was like, I'm going to put that bucket of blood away. We're making a very serious film here. It's an adventure film. I need to reserve. And, uh, and every time Margarita's like, more blood. Put more blood in my mouth now. I'm like, get it in there I now. Was character, what can I say? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Now, Danny, a uh, question for you. You play a character named Lando, correct? Yeah, I play Lando. Um, if Lando <laughs> invites you into which... a room for dinner, should you trust him? It, it depends on who was in the room before you got there. Mm. That's what it, uh, I think with Lando right away, you know, it's hard to not think right away, okay, rogue, um, thief, scoundrel. <laughs> Uh, there are some of those similarities in the character. Yeah. I think he's definitely out for himself. Um, for me, it's like I uh, didn't really know too much about live action role playing until uh, I got to Spokane, Washington, and I got to sit down with Adrian and a couple of the other folks, and she taught me the ropes in terms of what the points are and the cleric rules, which was great. Um, and I think with Lando and this character, we never see where he lives. So I believe he lives in the woods. I believe <laughs> this is all the man knows. This is all he's got. He's not even really friends with anybody. I mean, <laughs> he's the Henry David Thoreau he's, of LARPers. He's, he's, yeah, except, except with terrible poetry skills. <laughs> it's, it's not poetic whatsoever. Uh, but it was really fun to play. And, uh, and I think it started with the wardrobe and a cast I got to get put in right away, uh, mm -hmm. which was a new experience for me too. No more spoiler alerts. <laughs> Now, Jimmy, your, your, you. your character, Ronnie, is another, I guess I'd call him another villain in this story, right? He's not as bad as the succubus, but who is he? How does he fit into this community? Yeah, well, he's a terrible man, I guess, you know. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I play a lot of terrible men, generally, and, uh, <clears throat> I, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I, I wanted this guy to be different, so um, Joe and I discussed that he'd wear a headband, so he's a terrible man with a headband. And uh, the first day on set, uh, Jimmy came on and, and he's like, I'm thinking headband. <laughs> and am I gonna am yeah. I gonna say no? You know, I'm like, oh yeah, headband, that's great. And he comes on and his hair, you know, you see it in the trailer, it's like, you know, doing and he's got this kind of cowlick, and I'm like, perfect. And then I just learned now that uh, Jimmy's own personal method, if you want to be your own Ronnie Kwok, find an old t-shirt, cut out the sleeve, throw it on your head, and you are now a game master. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, he's, he's the boss. He runs the show yeah, where everybody Quox, has to listen Quox, to him. Quok's the, the DM. That's Dungeon Master, to those who don't know. Um, <laughs> so he kind of he kind of runs runs the the little the little LARPing world, and, and I think you know in, in most kind of LARPing circles, there's a guy who kind of maybe get, takes money out of his own pocket and gets the gets the event going, and and then hires his friends to kind of uh, be the wranglers, and, and he's that guy. So he's a guy who's who, who uh, he is. He's a little bit of a terrible man. Um, <clears throat> so this is his chance to be, you know, king. And, in, and every weekend, you know, every couple of weekends he gets to do this, and this is a bad weekend to do this, but, uh, yeah. He's also, there's a history with us that you exploit very much. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like Ryan's character. Uh, Ryan, how or Joe, Ryan. How does Joe feel about Ronnie? Well, Ronnie's always been the kind of guy that lives and breathes this world. In the, in the, the so-called real world, Ronnie... What, what would Ronnie do in the real world? Is it discussed? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, it's but in, in, this, in, the, in the LARPing world, he, like, like he said, he mm. is king. But it, for Joe, this world is so unbelievably ridiculous. That I mean, in the real world, 
Joe is king because well, he, well, he, you, I mean, shit isn't going, well, actually, stuff isn't going right for you. But, but you, you're cool and you have your, you know, you, I guess you get the ladies say, and then Quack on the other hand, this is finally his chance to kind of best you. I'm glad you guys are working out your characters now. <laughs> have some control. <laughs> this is great. Finally, finally figured it out. We've, 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 we've broken the arcs. Well, thank you, cameras. Just keep rolling. <laughs> well, well uh, as I understood it, though, actually, Ronnie's more like a god or a demigod, and, and Michael Gladys plays the king, right? I do, yeah. So you get to make a, you're, you're the king of a certain faction there. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the group that he's the, the leader of? Well, I'm, I'm the Red King. Mm -hmm. and, uh, king I Diamond. Chance. King Diamond. Uh, if any of you get that. The no one gets metal. that joke? <laughs> no metal fans? No metal fans? Actually, at the audition, I walked in and said, I used to listen to Man of War in high school. And I was a LARPer in college, and I think that's how I, I got the role. <laughs> you, get to make, you get to make one of those great pre-dawn battle speeches. Like, I'm thinking of the, you know, the, in the pantheon. Henry V. Like, 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 like Henry V or Day. Bill Pullman in Independence yeah. Day, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. where, which, which part of the spectrum is he on? Well, I, I think he's on the, the Henry V spectrum. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that, that, that was, that was uh, an amazing day on set because we had all the LARPers out. They were all in a row. I, I, we were out there and we're going, oh my God, we're making Braveheart with foam swords. <laughs> but then, you know, and Gladys was like, I need a beard. Beard's got to happen. And, you know, they slapped a beard on him, uh, and it was, like, you know, falling off between takes. And, like, go with it, go with on. it. This is great. <laughs> and, you know, we, we had three cameras set up because, you know, you, you, need, you always need three cameras with the Gladys. And he just turned in. It was like he just turned into Orson Welles um, immediately, <laughs> and, and he's just pouring. And it was a Friday night, and it was right before we wrapped. And you could just tell, like, all the LARPers are, are some of the guys who were actually back here, like Bear Man, big part, um, you could just tell, he's like, oh, and then we cut, and he's still going, oh, and it's all because Gladys just got everybody worked up. It was, it really was, it was, it was a sight to behold. It was pretty amazing, and to their credit, like, those, those LARPers were the best scene partners in the world. I mean, they were right there with us, and they had so much energy, and they kept it all day long, and they're going to be the soul of the film in a lot of ways, Absolutely. I'm sure. Were they there, sort of like the Humane Society, to monitor it, and make sure make sure that no LARPers were actually hurt in the making of this? Production? Oh God, no! We yeah. we we messed up a lot of LARPers, but they <laughs> they took it like champs. They were just like, oh yeah, keep rolling, that's fine, you know. But they everybody just kept they just everyone kept showing up on set. Like Zahn one night, uh, like we were all shooting, it was a day off, and you know it was a bunch of stuff hang going on. No spoilers. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and here comes Steve Zahn with a big bucket of cherries. He had gone out picking cherries on his day off, and he was walking around going, cherry, cherry, cherry. Would you like a cherry? How about a cherry? And, you know, and then there's, you know, there's corpses going like, thank you. Like, <laughs> who does that, you know? Everybody just wanted to be on set and just see what madness was happening next. And, and part of that was the LARPers themselves. You know, we would be like, you're done. That's a that's a wrap. That's what we say. It, it, you're done. And they were like, no, we're sti we're sticking it out f for the long run. I mean, we had people coming from Florida and New York, all you know, like everywhere, like all all across the nation. People stayed the whole summer for us. And, and who were we to kick them off? And they their their suits were awesome. So it was it was great. It it kind of fueled everybody's fire. So I, I understand that we have a uh, another clip. Can we show? show can we right? show? Do you guys want to see another clip? <laughs> What, why don't you, Joe, why don't you explain what we're about to see? Well, uh, this is, uh, this is a, a clip from Knights of Bad Astem that uh, it's the, uh, the first time that uh, Ryan is, or I'm sorry, Joe, is um, being trained by Hung the, uh, the skills of LARP. Uh, so that's pretty, the, pretty much the best uh, description I can say for now. I don't want to give too much away. Okay, well then let's dim the lights and we'll show it. Just another day making a movie about LARPing. <laughs> <sighs> so Joe, Joe, you talk a big game, but I understand that uh, you didn't direct this movie alone. No, had, no, I did not. You had some I had, help. I, I had a co-director, but due to the DGA, I'm not allowed to credit. Uh, well, why don't you just reveal, uh, her name is Edith. Yes. And uh, why don't you show this, us who this, this is. This here, this is Edith. Here, hold on, let me... <laughs> There. You directed uh, with Edith at your side. Yeah. Um, when, when Adrian and Rick uh, 
came out, one of the things that was so great about uh, their involvement was they made a lot of the weapons. So uh, every weapon that you see in the film uh, is an actual LARP weapon. Uh, and while we were doing it, uh, Rick was like, would you like a sword? I'm like, yes, I would. <laughs> And I had this uh, on set every day, uh, and I named it Edith after my grandmother. I thought it was just right. Uh, but what we would do is every night, because uh, we would literally, like, one of the things about production that's kind of tough is you, you go from doing days, and then they make you kind of switch over to nights. So first couple nights, everyone's just like, oh, God. You know, like, it's tough. So you have to really kind of keep the crew and the cast, everybody really going. So at the end of the night, especially Friday nights, uh, everyone would just be worked up into a tizzy and I would just kind of raise the sword and be like, huzzah! And then shockingly, everyone would be like, huzzah! Can we go home now? Uh, but yeah, she, this, this was my good luck charm the entire film and uh, she stays with me. I, I can't believe I actually got the blood out, which is pretty amazing. Can, is it machine washable? Yes, it is, yes. This, okay, uh, true to form and machine washable. Yeah, take the covers. LARP Alliance. <laughs> this one's for you. Well, we're going to open it up now to the audience with some questions, I believe. So maybe you could use Edith to gesture over that way and cue this gentleman. Dost thou have a question? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> um, it's been said before, but I think it needs to be said again. Thanks for coming up with an original movie. Um... There will be a board game, I swear, probably. <laughs> and then they'll remake it for the board game. Also, real quick, I have to say brown coats represent with Summer Glow up there. <laughs> But uh, my question's for Danny. Uh, what do you think Abed would think of this movie? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I think Abed would be in this movie. Uh, <laughs> it would have been one of the LARPers. Yeah, this, uh, this has been the year of uh, Dungeons & Dragons and LARPing for me. I got, to do, I got to be Dungeon Master in an episode of Community uh, for the first time, which was awesome and informative. Um, and yeah, I think he would absolutely love this movie. Yeah. He'd also be great at keeping track of who's really dead. <laughs> Next question. Hi, um, my question's for Ryan. You've played a bunch of different roles recently. How do you go preparing from, you know, being a knight in here, from a superhero to Jason Stackhouse? What's the best way for you to get into each character? The best way for me to get in? Uh, 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 look, I, I would like to say it's such a, a deep and meaningful process that I really go to a place in my soul that's <laughs> hard to channel, um, but it's... I don't do too many things in my life well. I guess uh, playing uh, this caper that we call acting is one of them. I, keep, I, 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 get, I get the feeling that I keep fooling people like Joe into giving me a job. Um, oh, God, so shut up. No, it's, 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 <laughs> and we get the, uh, the chance to go out to areas like Sp Spokane and um, make crazy, mad films like this. It's, it's a pleasure. It's kind of disappointing to meet you in person, though, because my no wife way. and I watch, I we watched True Blood, and I had her convinced that you were CG. <laughs> <laughs> nice question, please. Post-converted. Um, I have a question for Summer Glau. What was it, what was it like filming the, this comedy, like, what was it like filming this comedy? <laughs> <laughs> What's the question again? It was like six weeks of summer camp. It was really, really fun. We, we had a blast. I learned a lot. It was an incredible cast. And I felt, uh, I felt really honored. And um, it, yeah, it was, like, it was like no other movie I've ever done. It was six weeks of nights. And we felt like we were the only people out in the forest for, we were. for an adventure. Yeah, we were. <laughs> the only one. Yeah, it was great. Next question. Hi. Um, first of all, this is one of the most amazing casts I've ever seen for any movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I keep saying that every day. Like, okay, so, because this is, you guys are just so great. You've all represented shows that have been my all-time favorites throughout my life. But um, this is a question for all of you guys, and it's, what was it like working with this cast in particular? So, I, yeah, just go down the line. Who was your favorite? <laughs> I liked working with everybody but Jimmy. <laughs> that was going to be my joke about how much I hate. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not done. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now I'm done. I love you, Jimmy. 
love Jimmy too. But Mar Margarita was my girl, you know. Through the, we were the only girls in in the the boys club. So honestly, I'm so happy you were there. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole cast is just unbelievable. I feel like every day coming to work was a little surreal to have such a an ensemble of talented, funny, um, exciting actors to work with. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I came in late in the game, and I was just so happy to be part of this group because everyone here is amazing. Um, I came, and Jimmy uh, showed me what Idaho looks like for the first time in my life. We drove there once. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, played pool with Michael Gladys. I had, a, I had a great time. It was awesome. Yeah. I got to fly with Danny on the plane on the way up there. He's, he became my man crush on the film. <laughs> yeah. It's mutual. It's mutual. Yeah, it was, everybody was great. It was just, I mean, we all just kind of came together. I don't think too many people knew each each other and and we all really hit it off I, I felt really lucky except for Peter <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for me like I, I always enjoy the acting experience of uh, acting with these guys but to, to act with a 14 foot succubus was kind of uh, yeah. that was rather a, a nice sort of tick off the of the belt I guess because it's it's one thing to read it on the page and sort of think okay maybe they're gonna do this CG but uh, they got the guys, Guillermo's guys from Spectrum Motion to come in and we got mm -hmm. these ridiculous beasts that we actually act with. And uh, that, that doesn't take too much when you've got this thing coming at you when yeah. you're giving too much away. But it's, um, yeah, it was, it was easy. It was great. Actually, my favorite moment is right now when you said Creature, the nice lady over there who's doing sign language, did this. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, ex that's exactly my direction when I was doing I was like... Dude, uh, no, actually, uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I just hear, <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, one of the things that I think was really important for all of us was, um, you know, we, there's a lot of scenes with a lot of actors in the, in, the, in the mise en scene, if you will. And, you know, we shoot these wide shots and I have all of these amazing actors and they're all playing to a, like, real, things, real creatures, and, and that was so important in having that on set, and dead bodies everywhere, and blood and body parts, and, and watching all these guys act around it and smiling the whole time, it, it was a dream come true. Excellent. Next question. Right. I was going to say, hey, Peter, man, I've, uh, ever since I've seen you in Penelope with, uh, with you and Christian Re uh, Christina Ricci, I think you're pretty much a good actor, man. I really like your performance <laughs> in that. So, sorry, I'm kind of nervous, but... You're awesome, man. You're Pretty one, much. You're, <laughs> you're one of my favorite actors out there. But the main question is, what really made you want to get involved in this kind of genre? Because I think this is one of the really kick-ass uh, films you guys are coming out with. I'm really thankful to God. But this, like, like, once again, what, what made you really want to do this? You know? um, the script was just great. It's really sort of rare to come across a script like this that's that original and, and really funny. Uh, I like doing comedies, and I just had never done anything like it before. And uh, that's the, uh, my own personal criteria for doing it. And they wanted me. <laughs> Actually, the role was written for a six foot four fat Asian man uh, named Hung. So when uh, Matt, <laughs> well, Matt, Matt Wall and, uh, and yeah. Mark Burton, uh, the illustrious producer of the film, uh, we called me up one night and they're like, you know, cause I'm, th I'm thinking, how the hell are we going to find this person? You know, like, I remember reading the uh, M. Night Shyamalan uh, book about how they did Lady in the Water and they f just found this girl and it worked. Well, it worked. Whatever. Um, <laughs> it did what it did. Um, but I'm sitting there going, now what if I got her and made her shave her head and play a dude? But how are we going to find this character? And then Matt called up and goes, all right, dude, just listen. Just hear me out. Dinklage. And immediately I just went, Hell yes, absolutely. Like it was, it just, it fit so perfectly in, in a way, kind of. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is for uh, Summer. Just want to know how you um, um, got attached to this film and uh, also if the cast is uh, going to be signing any autographs at all today. Well, once I went in and talked to Joe and Matt and Mark, I was sold and the first person I, I heard was attached to it was Steve Zahn and I've, I've loved him for so long and I was so excited to get to work with him. 
So that was pretty much all. That was pretty much it. It was so easy. It was an easy decision. Next question. Uh, yeah, just uh, this is a very impressive cast. Uh, Mr. Dinklage, I loved you in The Station Agent um, and uh, Death at a Funeral. Um, and my question was. He's good uh, in everything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. My question's for the director. Um, with live action role playing being sort of a smaller group of people, um, what were the concerns when you were doing this about trying to make it accessible to a larger audience? Well, that was the one thing that was so great about having a character like Joe, um, because he's kind of the uninitiated. He's the, re he's, you know, the ordinary guy, we like to call the Dreyfus, the ordinary guy put in a very extraordinary situation. Now, you know, Ryan was like the guy who was just like, what? Which is exactly what everyone says when you hear about a movie that's about LARPing. What? Or you hear the title, what? And, wow, that sounds really good. What? Um, but no, that was like having, having Ryan be this character that has never LARPed before. It was our ability to kind of initiate the audience in a way. I mean, like you saw in the clip, we needed to have a scene like that where, you know, you just get the basics out, you know, like, you, or at least you know enough because, you know, like, for me, a lot of the best scripts are the ones that go, you know, have something that's set up like, like Zemeckis Gale, where they would set something up and then kind of pay it off in the end. And it's like, if you have those moments, it, it makes it a more enjoyable experience. And if you have something where you have a character like Joe who doesn't know what it is to LARP, and then by the end of the film is like, yes, and now we have to deal with a big monster, you know? <laughs> so that's where we were able to kind of initiate the, like the uninitiated the audience, because we, we wanted to assume that you've never, you've never heard of LARPing before, you know? And that was our like, sugar to make the medicine go down in a way. Could, could this movie expand, swell the ranks of LARPers? God, the, I hope sort so. Sort of the way Top Gun did with the military, people rushed out to join. <laughs> oh my God, and, 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 heavy, and we need more heavy metal in this world, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> what, what's funny is that, thank you, <laughs> metalheads. Um, the, the, the weirdest thing, though, is like we, like we were in Spokane doing, uh, doing prep, and we're just driving around looking for locations, and there was 17 dudes out there LARPing their ass off, and we're like, stop the car now. And everyone's <laughs> like, and we just went out there, and they're like, oh, you guys are doing the LARPing movie. And it's just so random, you know, and, and, and that, that happens, you know, like you just kind of go, you're driving along, you're like, I LARPers. You know, and, and I hope that there, that happens more, you know, because I mean, the whole film was about wish fulfillment. Be all you can't be. And where else but Comic-Con can you dress up like a, you know, a Navi or be, you know, from Final Fantasy 17 or something? You know, like that's, where else? You can't go to Baja Fresh looking like that. Come on, you know. <laughs> but the Burrito Ultimo is excellent. Um, I'm hoping I get an endorsement now. Um, but that's the thing. Like, we, we, if everybody can, you know, feel like they can express themselves and, and do anything, whether it's LARPing or paintballing or being in a band or make movies. I've, I've kid, I've like bullshitted you all. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm LARPing right now. I'm role playing. I'm a director. That's what we're trying to get across here is that you can be someone else. Yeah, that. Yes, question over here. Uh, my question's for Summer. You've worked in sci-fi and fantasy a lot. What keeps bringing you back to these type of projects? They're great roles. You can't always find roles like this. It, I, I just have so much fun. That's all it is. I just like playing good roles. Next question. First of all, I just want to say, uh, I'm a huge fan of you guys, especially Peter and Summer. You guys rule. Um, but it's actually kind of a general question. I heard the Amon Amarth in that last clip, and I was wondering uh, just who else, what other awesome musicians we might expect to hear upcoming, and um, how inspiring that is to you guys, I guess? Uh, actually, when we first, uh, when we first did the, um, the, the prep for the film, I gave the script to my composer, Bear McCreary, who worked with me on the last film, yeah. uh, my last film, and, and he read the script and goes, do it, I'm doing it, it's gotta happen. And uh, when uh, Ryan was working with, uh, with Bear on something, which we're not gonna give away, um, Bear made a, a metal mix of everything that he's loved, and, uh, and there's, there's a lot of heavy metal. I don't wanna give too much away, but that, that the Amon you know, band is definitely in there. Metal Blade was a huge supporter of us uh, from the beginning and hooked us up with some stuff, but uh, Bear's basically making a heavy metal orchestra. It's gonna be so rad. Mm. 
Mm. I heard some applause for Bear, but I think they, they uh, may not... More people will applaud if they know that he's the composer for oh, Battlestar well, Galactica. Battle Galactica, Galactica and, and yeah. Walking Dead uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and Wrong Turn 2, yay! Uh, but yeah, it, 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 having, he's so psyched and, and the stuff that he's been making is mind-blowing. It's amazing. Yes, ma'am. Next question. Um, hi. I just want to say that I am a huge fan of every last one of you. Ryan, you the man. Um, uh, <laughs> my question is for all of you. Um, if you could dress up for Comic-Con, what would you be? I, I think this is a good question. Uh, not just what, if you could dress up, but, but you've, you've, played, you've all played some iconic roles. Which character from sci-fi and fantasy classics of the past would you play if you could? Hmm. I'd be Master Chief. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would dress up. I, I don't think I could play the role, but, but if, I, I, yeah, he's cool. Mm-hmm. Ryan, uh, I guess for me, it'd be a toss-up between uh, either Han Solo or Astro Boy. Somewhere, maybe a mix between the two. <laughs> Let's go down the line, Michael. I think the the robot from the day the Earth stood still. Yeah, <laughs> the original one. Yeah, not Keanu Reeves. Gorge. No, no, no. Okay, Gord, just check. Right? Gord. Uh, I, th- I said earlier, I think uh, I would love to be the Flash, um, and then also I, I want to be Mowgli because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> he looks the part. You would totally be Mowgli. <laughs> I've never done the Princess Leia thing, so I probably. Try that. Slave Leia? Oh, yes. or... Yeah, yeah. Slave Leia. Slave Leia. <laughs> She-Ra, princess of power. <laughs> Summer just took mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've read people say they would like to see Peter play James Bond someday. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I think he's got the charisma for it. So the gentleman in the motion capture suit. Wow! Thank you very much. First of all, that was a very awesome trailer, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, my question's for everyone. Um, have you, since doing this movie, have you been inspired uh, to do other costumes, I guess, as previous dismissed, or costume movies? Um, yes. Yeah. Only if we can wear that one. <laughs> I just Rule found my man. costume for summer for you Comic-Con. Have, he has a fantastic trailer voice. Can, 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 sir, can you just come back to the come microphone to the for microphone one second? For C- could you just say Knights of Bad Aston for us? Say, in a world. Yes. In a world. Ooh. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear him say, what else, would the ca- what, what else would the cast like to hear this man say? <laughs> Knights of Bad Aston. Yes. That works for me. More? Okay. Come see you too. Excellent. <laughs> Happy birthday. All right. That's good. <laughs> Summer is tomorrow. Dude, you're so on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> oh, this should be interesting. Yes, sir. This should be good. It's an extra from the sabotage video. Right. Um... Can any of you guys give me uh, any tips on LARPing? Because the people at Comic-Con have really been owning me this year. (laughs) Any tactics? LARPing tactics. Show no fear. I I think I would defer to Dinklage. Get a weapon? (laughs) (laughs) One for each arm. What did you guys Finish do to him? him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Hi. Um, okay, so I have a question for Summer. All right. Um, a tiny bit of background on my question is, in the last 10 years or so, there's been a lot of uh, epic battle movies that audiences love, such as um, Jason vs. Freddy, Alien vs. Predator. So taking your character from this movie to add to the mix... Um, who would you think win the next epic battle movie? This character versus Cameron versus River Tam, and why that person would win? Mm. Now that is a Comic Con question. Yes. <laughs> Summer. I don't know. <laughs> um, River? Is it River? I don't know, guys. Okay, River. 
River was the hardest. That was the hardest fighting out of all three, for sure. River was, was the hardest. Even though um, for LARPing, what was hard for me to get used to is that it's not choreographed. So you have to be creative and you have to think in the moment. And um, that was a little bit scary for me. I feel like the people that were able to be really creative and in the moment are the best LARPers. So that, that, that took a lot of work for me. <laughs> but maybe River is the best trained. Well, that does it for our panel today. I want to hear, let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> Knights of Badassa. And I believe we're going to run the trailer again, right, Joe? Yes. Uh, but before we do, um, this really is such an amazing, this is a dream come true for, for many, uh, I, I, don't, I really don't know what to say. I never in a million years would have thought we would have our little film in Hall H. And I, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for showing up. Thank you. And <laughs> for being so nice, and for the fact that we didn't have cool Thundercats bags, I thought it would be only appropriate to use Edith to knight you all members of the Knights of Bad Astem. So, what we should do is probably have a couple people come out, uh, our friends, the LARPers. Are the, LARP are the LARPers still around? Do we have the LARPers? They're back there. All right, so they're gonna go in the back there, but what I'm gonna do is we're, I'm going to say hip hip, and your response is going to be huzzah. So, thank you everybody. And to the Knights of Bad Astem, hip hip! Huzzah! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Huzzah! Thank you very much, everybody. And now we're going to roll the trailer. Thank you, Hall H. <laughs> Lightning bolt. The Knights Thank of Bad Astem, Thank everybody. Thank you very much. Once again, give it up for the Knights of Badassdom. <laughs>